Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot. And I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to North Lincolnshire. Now today, I'm beginning this episode at a former railway bridge. We can tell that's a railway bridge, can't we? Because we've seen plenty of these before in our time. Obviously, a line crossed this road. Now this road is called Carside, and you'll find this in the first place within North Lincolnshire that's actually got town status. There's a few of these in North Lincolnshire. This one is the one that I think is the furthest to the west. This is Etworth. Etworth is the first civil parish with town status we've seen in North Lincolnshire. In the intro, I wasn't sure if this was the furthest town to the west in the district, and for good reason, as I needed to check the location of Kroll slightly further to the north. It appears Kroll is marginally further westwards. Either way, Epworth is on the Isle of Axome, and it lies on the A161, about halfway between Goul and Gainsborough. We've met the Isle before, but a quick reminder. The Isle of Axome is so called because until it was drained by the Dutch engineer Sir Cornelius Vermuyden in 1627, it was an inland island in the Fens, surrounded by rivers, streams, bogs and meres. This is a very historic settlement and there's one major reason why. This was the birthplace of John Wesley, founder of the Methodism movement with his brother Charles. And as you might expect, Methodism will feature heavily in this episode. Etworth has given its name to many institutions associated with Methodism across the world. John Wesley's father, Samuel Wesley, was the rector here from 1695 to 1735. Etworth is described as the home of Methodism thanks to the Wesleys, and there's a Methodist church in the centre of the town. There's also a trail around the town linking the sites which were significant for the Wesley family, one of which is that very church. Now, because this is a town, you'd expect most of the features to be on the high street. And there's plenty on here. Although, some of the features aren't. I'm heading towards the old rectory, which is an important part of Epworth. It's not all about the Wesleys here. There are some other notable former residents of this place too. These include John de Mowbray, the fourth Baron Mowbray, Alexander Killam, founder of the Methodist New Connection, the cricketer Ian Botham, Benjamin Huntsman, an inventor and manufacturer, the actress Sheridan Smith, and poet Mehetabel Wesley Wright. It's not all about religious history either. Another notable resident was Nathan Francis Young, who was born here in 1654 and is commonly referred to as a founding farmer of the original town. He's recorded as the first to monopolise the local land between the farmers spread throughout the area. There's a plaque dedicated to him in the town centre, as well as a small museum that now stands near the site of his original home. The Epworth Show has been held for over 60 years and takes place on the August Bank Holiday Monday. Originally, the show catered only for the local area. Over the years, it's grown while still having an agricultural aspect with cattle, sheep, goats, shy horses and vintage tractors. Epworth Show has links with the three Epworth churches which come together for a prior Sunday evening service and on show day share an information tent. The show is run by the Epworth and District Agricultural Society, a charitable organisation. Its committee comprises community and honorary members and patrons. Other activities run by the Society between May and September include four horse and pony events and an August Bank Holiday Weekend Beer Festival with live bands. Etworth has also hosted the Etworth Festival of the Plough Agricultural Fair for a number of years. So I opted to take this footpath to cut the corner off of uh, the end of Blow Row to get back to the main road. I kind of wish I hadn't done now because it's so muddy and I'm, I'm slipping around all over the place. 
I wouldn't mind, but I've actually got a new pair of shoes on, which I bought last week. Still muddy. Here's a few other general things about Epworth before we hit the demographics. The Epworth Bells was a local newspaper which started printing in 1872. It ended publication in 2019, but the old printing office building still stands on the corner of the High Street and Church Street. There used to be a hotel in the town called the King's Head Hotel and Croft. The hotel stood from 1769 to 1975 when it was purchased by Epworth Parish Council who demolished it. There are plaques remembering it, however. Fountain Court in the marketplace was also the location of one of the most violent political riots in British history. And speaking of the marketplace, later we'll see the Market Cross, which is significant. 98.6% of people here are white British. Epworth today boasts a population density of just 164, which is pretty small when you think this is a town of almost 5,000 people. That's because the west of the parish is a huge expanse of open farmland created by the draining of the Isle of Axome, known as Epworth Turbury. The average price for a house in this town comes in at £266,000. Now, as a small town of almost 5,000 people, you would of course expect there to be plenty of shops and other facilities. Much like my Hazel and Home Upon Spalding Moor videos, I'd be here practically all day if I tried to list them all. So here's a short montage of some of them you can find both in and around the town centre. Epworth is served by buses provided by Isle Coaches, Stagecoach and First South Yorkshire, which give the town services to Doncaster and Scunthorpe. I came across four pubs on my walk around. There may be more. On the central traffic lighted crossroads on the A161 is the White Bear Pub and Kitchen. The Red Lion is arguably the most historic of the four. John Wesley often stayed here on his visits to the town later in his life. In the Tartan Room here hangs a portrait depicting John Wesley, which was plucked from the fire in the old rectory in February 1709. Here's the Queen's Head Hotel located at 19 Queen Street. What pub describes this as Epworth's last drinker's pub? It was refurbished in 2013. I've perhaps saved the best until last. The old school inn is exactly what it says on the tin. This has been converted from a former school. Well, that's something you don't see very often, isn't it? The old school inn, a former school and a pub all in one. It's actually a bar and a restaurant as well, that, according to the sign. On Burnham Road, we have a leisure centre. This boasts a swimming pool, a 27 station gym, two squash courts, a sports hall, an outdoor multi-use games area with floodlights and a skate park. Speaking of parks, I came across two on my walk around the town. Here's the first. This one is located right in the town centre, close to St Andrew's Church. The second we come across here on Battle Green. This is the bowling green at the rear of the Epworth War Memorial Field. The park next door is Thurlow Playground. At the other side of the field, there's something called the Thurlow Pavilion, which is listed by Google as a dance hall. Now it's doubtful that the camera will pick this up at this distance, but here in this little play park, above sort of the multi-use games area, you might be able to see a little white dome. That's probably what it looks like at this distance. It's actually a former windmill. Now that I won't be walking to 
But a bit later on, because Etworth is so large, I will be taking a, a short drive up to where that is. So we'll pass it in the car. Whether or not it'll pick it up, I don't know, as I drive past it, but I'm hoping it will. Etworth also has a fire station located on Tottermire Lane and a police station on Chapel Street. Here's another branch of the South Axone practice which we came across in Oston Ferry and West Butterwick. This is Epworth Surgery on the High Street. Educational institutions in the town are pretty good. There's a primary school and a secondary school and also this library close to the police station. Epworth Secondary School is the South Axome Academy. The school was built in 1961 by Lindsay County Council. Initially, it was called Epworth Comprehensive School and afterwards South Axome Comprehensive School. Here then is the Wesley Memorial Methodist Church. This was built in 1888 and opened for worship in 1889. It continues to be a busy hub in the center of the community. Now all those Methodist churches we've seen on the channel in various places, they all originate here because this is the home of the Wesleys. The church, along with the town as a whole, attracts hundreds of visitors from around the world each year, tracing the history of the Methodist movement. Almost a century after the death of the Wesleys, the General Conference of the Methodist Church decided that a church should be built in their hometown of Etworth to honour them. Opposite the church is a youth centre, itself an old chapel. It's the Killam Memorial Methodist Chapel and adjoining school. So as if Methodism wasn't enough, we also have an Anglican church as well. It stands on a hill. Let's go and find it. It's up this little path here. The Church of St Andrew is on a hill overlooking the town. Its architecture suggests that its oldest part may have been built in the late 12th century, with later additions in the 14th and 15th centuries. There's a reason the church was built on high ground. Until the aisle was drained in the 17th century, this area barely rose above the level of the surrounding marshes. There's been a church in Epworth since the Saxon period. That original Saxon building occupied the space where the nave and western end of the chancel now stand. The Reverend Samuel Wesley, father of John and Charles Wesley, was rector here and he's buried in the churchyard. Here's a board which details some things about him. A small map on that board points you in the direction of his grave very close to the church building. If you visit this, please remember to be respectful. As you might expect, the main landmarks in Epworth center on the Wesleys. This is the base of the medieval market cross where John Wesley preached. And here is the man himself. There were many attempts to erect a statue of John Wesley in Epworth, including one plan for the centenary of his death in 1891. A statue was finally installed in 2003, created by Sue Reeves, a local artist. Now to the untrained eye, this statue of John Wesley here looks kind of out of place because it's just on a, what seems to be just like a residential street just outside the town center. However, the reason it's there is because it overlooks the old rectory. Let's go and have a look at that. On Rectory Street, aptly named, we come across the old rectory where the Wesley family lived in the 18th century. John Wesley's statue overlooks his old home. The old rectory is a Queen Anne style building rebuilt after the fire in 1709. After having been completely restored, it's now the property of the World Methodist Council. It is maintained as a museum and is also the site of supposed paranormal events that occurred there in 1716 while the Wesley family were still living in the house. There's also a Museum of Methodism in London, which tells the history of the movement from John Wesley to the present day and its contribution to shaping Britain's political and social history. Now, everywhere you look in this place, you're going to find blue plaques on virtually every building. It certainly seems that way. Here's the first one. Now, I don't know what this one says because I haven't read it yet. Let's see. This was the site of the first Methodist preaching house, 1758 and Wesleyan Chapel, 1821. 
Let's have a look at some of the other blue, pla blue plaques that I found around Edworth. Much like the amenities section, I've grouped all the blue plaques I came across on my walk around into one montage. There are bound to be more than these, but nonetheless, here's a snapshot of some of the historic and notable buildings in this part of North Lincolnshire. So here's probably something more of an unusual landmark, not something I would normally film. Look at this. I'm on Birchfield Road close to uh, South Axome Academy, which is over there. And there's a primary school just here. But look at this, look at these trees. I'm surrounded by these massive poplar trees. There's a, a row here. There's a row on the school field and a row at the back of the school field. That's quite amazing. The main war memorial is in the park mentioned earlier, but on Albion Hill is a rough stone of remembrance placed by the Royal British Legion. This is known as the Garden of Remembrance. One of the more mundane features of the town is on the A161 close to the leisure centre. This is a telephone exchange. And back where we first began, we're at the former railway bridge over Carside. The town was served by a station on the Axome Joint Railway, which ran from Gould to Lincoln via a connecting spur to the Doncaster to Lincoln line. The station closed to passengers in 1933, and the site has been redeveloped and is now occupied by a farm store, which we're about to drive to. Okay, I'm pretty much all the way around my main walk. Just want to uh, draw your attention to this before we move on to the picture bit. And that is the Epworth Town Council logo. I've seen this on a few things as I've been walking around. This one here is at the end of Fieldside. It's a nice little planter, which uh, looks um, a bit dilapidated at the moment, I have to say, but that's because it's only just started spring. So I imagine in the summer, spring and summer, this would look a lot better because I think Atworth is a place that's very proud of itself and why not why not it's uh, it's it's full of history and it's full of things which are interesting and uh, you know you want to be you want to keep that keep people coming keep people coming to the place you know attract people let's see what else attracts people to Atworth in today's picture bit
Now, of course, most of RAF Sandtoft or Sandtoft Airfield, whatever you want to call it, falls within Epworth Parish, but I covered that in the Belton episode. If you haven't seen the Belton episode, I will link it at the end of this video. But now all I've got left to do is drive towards Station Road and up Station Road towards Sandtoft to finish this one off. Epworth is a massive place. I cannot cover all of it. I hope I've covered enough. I've been walking around for about an hour and a half. So if that's not enough, so there's something wrong. <laughs> over just here oh, we'll have to move there's a car coming hold on there we go I've pulled over just here because Torn Valley stores which you can see on the right there is the site of the old Epworth station this is where the railway line would have crossed this road and the windmill I was talking about earlier is behind that but as you can see you can't really see it just wait for this lorry quite a long way with houses on either side it's a very linear part of Epworth and it runs to Sandtoft very much like Belton does of Atworth complete another one down in North Lincolnshire and I'll see you next week guys somewhere else in the district I've been Andy also known as the village idiots and I'm out <laughs> <laughs>